Okay, today on the bench we have a Siltronix model PM15. This is a watt meter. Um, now, they, you can see the faces off of it. It was sent in, the customer said that the needle was sticking and wasn't working right. Uh, apparently, he had just gotten this. Um, if you hear a loud fan in the background, that's actually <laughs> my laboratory RF amplifier right there is being powered by that, or being, amplifying the signal coming out of the signal generator right there. So currently I have a 30 megahertz signal going over to the uh, laboratory RF amplifier which is then putting out a 5 watt signal. So you can see at 30 megahertz we're right on 5 watts so that scale's calibrated perfectly fine. Now what did I actually find wrong with this thing? <laughs> it kind of had me confused for a minute because uh, usually when a needle sticks and honestly other than CB meters, needles honestly usually don't stick. And I, when I mean CB meters, I don't mean meters like this. I mean the little cheap junk plastic meters that they use in CB radios. Those, yeah, very common for those to stick. Meter movements, good professional high quality meter movements like this, honestly, they usually don't stick. If there's something, if it's sticking, yeah, it usually has some serious problems. But this one apparently wasn't sticking because I could get the needle to move. I try. I could almost get it calibrated to like four watts, but or if you know five watts, whatever I was trying, or you know, the uh, fifty watts or the five hundred or fifteen hundred watt scale. I could get the needle almost there, and then I'd you know, turn the power off and back on, and it would be in a completely different spot. And then the needle wouldn't come down to zero. So there's a zero adjustment actually right here. So when the meters turn, you know, there's no power coming into this. You'd use this adjustment on the front of the meter to place the needle. So it splits the line on zero. And then on the inside here, there's actually a little finger that sticks out. And that aligns with that slot right there. And what it does is it swings that arm back and forth. Neither applies or reduces the tension, the spring tension. So there's a clock spring in there. So we can see it works. I'll turn the uh, output of my signal generator off. And on. Off on and you can see it's working just fine it's going from zero right to five watts so it's working fine now so actually let me just turn the signal generator off and I'll turn this noisy laboratory amplifier off give that thing about three days for the fan to finally wind down on it <laughs> so what did I find wrong let me just get some cables unhooked here so I just have the meter face actually just sitting in, in the housing. I have all the nuts off of it right now. But so if you ever get a meter like this, and it, like I say, it doesn't need pretty much all meters are pretty much the same thing. They all operate on the same principle design-wise internally. They're all pretty much the same. Um, what is actually this the spring for the needle? It's actually what you'd call like a clock spring. So it's, I don't even know if it'll show up in the camera. You can kind of see starting right there the tip of my screwdriver if I come in from the side like right there in there's actually a little thin it's not a round wire it's like a piece of flat you know, take a wire and crush it flat I guess you could say so it's like flat spring steel but it's rolled up in that's why they call it a clock spring because it looks like the springs used in clock movements but there's a coil spring in there that's what's actually applying the resistance to the meter movement. And I don't mean resistance electronically. I mean that the actual physical resistance, you know, against that. That's the spring. That's actually what was wrong. This meter, apparently, when it got shipped, and actually, if you look right there, you see that little point sticking out right there? The clock spring somehow, now you can see the distance between there and the edge of that clock spring. You can just barely see a few of the windings right there, that clock spring. The outer wrap of that clock spring somehow had gotten out to here, down underneath of that pin, right there. So you can see, I got my screwdriver under, underneath of it. It actually got down under there somehow. I have absolutely... This thing had to have taken one hell of a hit in shipping for that to happen. But uh, that's all it was. I was able to get in there, actually, with this little screwdriver. I just basically latched onto that co that winding that was under there, pulled it out. It popped up on top. The coil spring that was all deformed-looking, whoop, 
popped right back in a nice curly even space you know spring like it should and meter worked fine so if you ever get a meter can be in a you know, a piece of test equipment a watt meter like this anything like that if it got damaged or it's all of a sudden it's just not working right and you shipped it so you don't know if maybe the thing got you know, thrown out the back of a truck you know or off of a loaded box got dropped off of a loading dock or something pop your meter face off and see if the clock spring looks okay so like i say just look for that little coil spring look you make sure it looks like the winding like i say the first thing i noticed when i popped the face off was i was like holy shit man that spring looks all screwed up i thought it was just okay meter movement's bad yep it's it's junk but uh yeah it was actually somehow got under that little finger there so and all you normally have to do to get meter faces off now this doesn't hold true for all meters but for the majority of meters like this you'll need to usually you know, take your screws or the nuts off of the back and if actually if you look right there you see there's a little notch right there and there they're actually like screwdriver slots so when the meter face is popped on there what you do is you come in with a screwdriver from the back side here As a matter of fact you can even see right there and there you just come in from the back side with a screwdriver in like this pry up a little bit while you're pulling out on the face get those two corners basically loosened up you'll be able to just pop the meter face off so now the only thing i need to do is uh make sure it's you know get the meter back together so and then the meter face just pops back on now one thing to be aware of when you're doing it taking meters apart that have a zero adjustment um, don't move this screw and don't move that arm that's hanging down right there the zero adjustment arm don't move either of those while you have it apart if you do be sure that you have that little pin that's sticking out right there in okay, case so that little round pin everything's black it's just hard it doesn't show up very well <laughs> that little pin there we go that little pin that sticks out right there make sure it's in pretty much exactly the same orientation as that arm right there because what can happen is and i've seen this happen i've had people send me meters that they screwed up because when they put the face on this wasn't lined up with that and what happened was that pointer it's not so bad if you get it on the outside edge so you know when you when you install the meter face normally that little pin would ride right in here okay matter of fact i can just do it get the face pop back into the housing here so normally what would happen is that little finger rides in here and as you move it back and forth okay you can see because like i say you're applying or removing more spring tension to the needle okay but like i say once you've moved it you now need to make sure that when you the meter face goes back on that little pin is going to hit the hole or actually hit the slot now if it gets on the outside edge one side or the other eh, not a big problem usually you'll turn it and it'll move the needle in one direction or the other but then it's when you keep turning it won't go back in the other direction so you'll just have to pop the, the face off the problem is if you get that pin and it lands on the, you know, the little metal that comes down on either side here. Like I say, that's an oval. If it pushes in on that, you can bend this part. Or I've even seen in some meters where that's really heavy metal right there, this little U-bracket, I guess you could call it, and the pin will break off. Now, if the pin doesn't get lost, no problem. You can usually glue that back on. But yeah, to save yourself from having to do that, just make sure when you put meter faces back on, you have that pin in the same orientation as the slot right there. Best thing to do is, if you don't have to screw with either this or that while you have the face off don't make sure you don't move that make sure you don't move that and the meter face will pop right back on no problems whatsoever so you know, now that i've done this i'll have to make sure very carefully you know, and when i put the meter face on i kind of jiggle it back and forth as i'm trying to slide that in there just so i can see does the needle when i'm jiggling this meter face back and forth a little bit that needle should wobble back and forth because it's if the pin is in there that's going to be slightly moving that back and forth so there's just a few tips on if you have a meter that uh, appears to be trash <laughs> because it's just doing weird things like i say you can't get it zeroed it reads right one second and then when it comes back down yeah it's no longer at zero you know so let's say on this meter for example it was it went up to five watts and you know it came back down to zero and it went up to five watts then it came down to two watts and then when it goes up it might be at four and a half watts or maybe only makes it to three the next time around 
pop your face off, just make sure that little clock spring in there looks like it's in, in good shape. If not, see if it's what happened to this one. Like I said, I've never seen that happen before, but hey, if it happened to me, that means it can happen to somebody else. Just make sure your spring didn't get... Anything I can figure is it took a hard hit in this direction, like that. The spring, the whole spring assembly kind of wobbled like this and got down underneath you know, and then that outer coil, basically, when it when that spring assembly, it got down underneath the outer wrap of it, got underneath that little piece of metal that sticks out there. So, there you go. Just a quickie video on uh, things to look for if you have a funky operating meter movement.